something that immediately comes to mind is the little ritual that I have uh, every time uh, a plane that I'm in takes off. I repeat Descartes' phrase um, in Latin, I am human, nothing is alien to me. And I always feel so powerful and so stupid as a, as a member of my species when I'm jettisoning off the ground in a giant tube full of flammable gas. And I think, of course, about the Romans, about their ambition, and about how throughout their poetry they're talking about how their empire stretches to the stars and how we in our own modern moment have accomplished something so similar that we've literally landed on heavenly bodies. And that, for me, is where I'm reminded, oh, that's why I'm a classicist. Oh, that's, that's what gets me going about the ancient world. And in this moment where probably by my life, the end of my life, we'll have space tourism and we'll have a whole cadre of space lawyers and space policy makers, something that would have made the Romans swoon. I think that there's so much more work unfolding for the classicist and the comparatist to talk about the implications of further exploration, both into space and into the nooks and crannies of atoms that can inspire classicists and that can, can give us new ways to, to think of answers and to make comparisons between the ancient world and the modern world. In addition to the joys of speaking with the dead, which I think in small part speak for themselves, um, as Stephen Greenblatt famously reminded us, uh, it began with the desire to speak with the dead, he said. On a more practical level, wrestling with ancient texts forces us to try to understand, or at least forces us to encounter, people who are on the one hand almost indistinguishable from us, but on the other hand are endlessly different from us. Uh, people who thought about the meaning of freedom and justice and, 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 and strove to create a democracy, but people who had slaves and thought women were on the same, in the same, human, uh, same animal class as animals. And that, for me, has been the most potent lesson I've ever had of how empathy works and how being a good citizen is supposed to work, because under the duress of bad grades, I tried to distance myself and my own biases as much as I could while talking about a particular poem or historical narrative. I have become more sensitive to my own biases when talking to my more conservative family members or any other community, marginalized or otherwise, that I know nothing about. It has made me a person who I feel more people, can, can relate to more people uh, and can make people feel more comfortable. It's given me more tools in my toolbox for relating to people and understanding how I need to shift my thinking and make my, my rhetoric more careful in order to make others feel comfortable, to help them see what I want them to see, but more importantly, to learn from them. And so it helps you make friends and win allies.